Craft Brews and Casual Conversations. My name is Drew. I'm Rob. We're drinking a fruit beer. Not a root beer, a fruit. A fruit beer. This is Dudes with Brews on a Port. Cue the intro. I think it's a week. It is a it is a uh, mango wheat beer, so it's considered a fruit beer and a wheat beer. Oh, okay. Because we are drinking Mango Cart by Golden Road Brewing from Golden Road Brewing. That's what I said. Said yes. it again, and it's a brewery that I wanted to try to find before, and I couldn't, but now I did find it, and then that's great. It's a series inspired by the iconic fruit cart vendors of Los Angeles. A light, refreshing wheat ale with lots of fresh mango and a pleasant, slightly tart finish. Has 4% ABV, 10 on the IBU, so very light on the alcohol, very light on the, the bitterness. But, dude, you take one whiff of this, so it looks like juice, for sure. Yes, it does. And you smell it, and it smells amazing. You that get mango, yeah, it's right there. You all right? Yeah. You, you don't seem enthusiastic about it. That mango, it's right there. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Now let's let's try it. Wow. That's pretty good. I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> pretty damn good. It's like I'm drinking some Tropicana. I enjoy this. Yeah, that is good. Uh it's a good breakfast beer. I like that. I like that phrase. Yeah. I could, I, yeah, I could eat some fucking waffles and pancakes with this beer. Hell yeah. Some bacon, dude, sausage. That'd be good. It does have the little tarty tartness to it, but not overpowering. Shit's good. I yeah, like it. Yeah, I like it a lot, too. It's, it's very smooth and very... You might have to uh, get some more, Rob. Yeah, that'd be a good um, beer just to sit around. Yeah, sit around and yeah. drink. Drunk. So a couple of things, uh, Rob, I wanted to discuss. I wanted to discuss, you know... If we if we wanted to to keep our anim, anonymity, did I say that right? Anonymity. Yeah, I said it right that time. Yes. I found out it's pretty easy to find this podcast by searching my name. Sweet. And I don't like that. Oh. What about my name? <laughs> I don't think I don't know. I don't know. But I uh, so I, I wish that you could find it by searching my name. I I tried it's to, the best thing I ever did in my life, and it's probably the best thing I'll ever do. Oh. Um. I have a high bar. <laughs> well, uh, um, oh, well, shit, what was I saying? Um, so, in your anonymity. Uh, yep, yep. I like to, I like to uh, um, separate my um, personal life, personal life from life? from work life. No, like you know, like work and personal yeah. personal life. I like to separate that. So, I don't tell anybody at work that I work with any of my employees that I have a podcast. I made that mistake before. I'm not doing it again. And uh, I was talking to my boss about radio stuff. And he's, I said, you know what, that I miss it. He's like, well, you should just do podcasts. And I said, and then I just go, well, he, you know, how do you know I'm not? Whatever. And that was the end of that conversation or whatever. And then he kind of like brought it up again. And I was just like, I was like, yeah, I, I do do a podcast about, you know, we drink beer and just kind of shoot the shit a little bit. And he's like, oh, okay. And then a couple of weeks go by. And then recently he goes, uh, he's like, oh, how's that going? And he was, it was in front of another supervisor, which is fine. And I was just like, it's fine. And he's like, oh, he's like, I want to listen to it. I'm interested in listening to it. And I was just like, no, I was like, yeah, I was like, no, I don't, I don't really want you to. <laughs> and he's like, why do you talk about me or work? And I was like, no, I just don't, you know, I don't, I, I like to keep that separate. You should have started yelling harassment, walked away. And backwards. then I went, I, then I go, I was like, I'll tell you what, if you can find it, you can listen to it. <laughs> and then Three all, seconds later, he's it like, was I literally it. two seconds. Like the the other he's supervisor like, oh, the on a porch. The other supervisor goes, "How do you spell your last name?" And I told him. And then he looked up my name, 
in the word podcast. And then like, I'm looking at his search results and I see it's the second fucking line is, uh, is dudes with bruises on a porch. And then like, he like scrolls and he's just like, is it this one? And I'm like, I was nope, like, nope, no, that's not yeah, it. I go, I go, no, what, what is, what is it? And he's like, dudes with bruises on a porch. I was like, no idea. And then they already knew it was about beer and they're like, and then they, they had known that I recorded the day before this conversation. Yep. And then they go, Interesting because it says it uploaded about 20 hours ago and they go, Rob and Drew talk. To the, I'm just like, I was like, wait, what is this called? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, I was like, don't pull up those hacks. I don't know who they are. <laughs> and then so um, Blazers are really, uh, yeah, a really common name. So maybe. And then uh, um, my boss ended up listening to it and uh, he said he liked it. And then, but he also said, he's like, Oh, I won't listen to it again if, if it makes you uncomfortable. Well, when you put in Rob Phillips uh, podcast, you get uh, Rob Phillips at Triba, Triple Diva session number one <laughs> promo podcast by Rob Phillips. All right. That sounds good. Uh, Rob Phillips, take me to the top. Hashtag. <laughs> take me to the really? top original mix. Take me to the top two. Shouldn't it be called Take Me to the Top Again? Oh, the Tag You're It podcast. Rob Phillips on Trinity. A lot, a lot of Rob Phillips out there. Yeah. Huh? Uh, Foundational Thoughts, part four. All right. That sounds interesting. Uh, yeah, the Tag You're It podcast. So uh, Podmatic is another Rob Phillips podcast. All right. So a lot of Rob Phillips out there yeah. is, is the point. Um, so yeah, Rob Phillips hosts a phone in on the latest sporting action. BBC, BBC Radio Wales BBC? call Rob Phillips. Oh really? Yeah, you British Rob Phillips. So hello, my, Governor yeah. Robert Phillips. We're going to talk about some sports. Cricket uh, is up to bat first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, those football. Blood, those bloody wankers. They uh, they they hit the, the the ball and they go run and suckers, and they're the, the bowler. The bunch of bunch of twats manchester you need i don't know anything about any of that uh <laughs> interesting so uh I but yeah i don't to, i need to get my name out there more I need to become more famous than the other podcast well, i don't know than rob phillips i don't know how my name got on how i got associated with the show i don't know where somewhere it's got to be there that they're getting this information off of so i have to change it so it doesn't come up when people search my name well you're the one that uh you know, is in the notes for, you know, like you, you had to register your podcast, right? Yeah, it's on Lipson. Yeah, so I mean. But I don't put my name on it. You had to if you, because you have to pay to release it, right? Mm-hmm. And you probably don't pay in cash because it's a computer. Mm-hmm. So there's a connection there. Well, why do they got to put my name? Because most people don't want to be an- anonymous. Well, I'm not anonymous. I'm just, I just don't want people that. I don't want listening to it going on it, even though people do listen to it already that I wish didn't. <laughs> so. I, I, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I don't know what to tell you. It's out there now. There's no putting that genie back in the bottle. I wish I wish we could block people from listening to it. Really? Certain people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, just guess get, I, I, guess, I guess I can think of a couple. People I just get concerned with, with like the work stuff is like, you know, that's fine if you liked it. But then the problem is if people get, my delivery is bad or, or they're mis they're, they're over analyzing or misinterpreting what I'm saying. Or they say like, they hear me say like, fuck this or whatever, fuck that, this, this, but really I'm, I'm not like seriously saying it, but they think I'm seriously saying it. You know what I mean? Yes. And no, because you're allowed to say that. Right. But I'm just saying like, it creates a conflict on if they're like, if, I, I say something and they, they... You're never saying anything that's... They you, make you it don't seem allow like, yourself to say anything like that. But they make it seem like... But they could like say, well, that sounds like it could be this from work. And it's not. I just don't want... I just don't want... You know, I just don't want it. Okay. I don't want You're it. You're allowed to not want it, too. Right. And it puts me in a, a conflict. Because I think some people would like it. I think some people would enjoy the program. And... Uh, I think less people would do what you think is gonna what you're talking about happening, maybe, uh, than what you think. You but know? like, what if somebody what if somebody you, you, doesn't like me at work and they're going out, they're trying to find something and they go, "Well, did you hear this podcast? He mentioned 
because uh, one time I, I did mention that a guy at work was annoying me. So? I know, I know, and it's nothing this bad. Is, this is what I'm talking about, though, is like you're already worried about saying the wrong thing uh, and say, or saying something bad on the podcast. So for you to then also be worried that somebody will connect you to a podcast that you didn't say anything bad on because you're worried about them connecting you to it. Uh, it's a double, like you, you've, you've blunted both sides of that blade. It's like, uh, the, the next episode that we do is just going to be an hour of silence. Okay. Just, I'm down. Just be, we'll say the beer and then I'll just be quiet for all that time. Dead air. And you think no one will be offended by that? You think someone would? Making fun of the deaf people. <laughs> Making fun of mute people. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can overanalyze anything into being offensive to somebody or something. It's just annoying that because it's happened. But it so. hasn't happened. Nothing bad happened. You think something bad could happen, but that has not happened yet. Nobody has came up to you and been like, I heard what you said on the podcast about this. I'm going to get you in trouble, right? <laughs> I don't think so. Hey, I'm not telling you how to be or what to do or what to say or what to, who to tell. Uh, I'm just saying uh, you're already careful about what you say on the podcast. You're allowed to be annoyed by people at work. Trust me, uh, most people, every, I would say almost everybody has somebody that they work with or that they have to be in contact with that annoys them in some way, shape, or form. Um, have I ever annoyed you, Rob? Be honest. Yeah, there have been a couple times. <laughs> like what? Uh, let's, let's, let's hash it out. Let's talk about it. Let me let me work on myself. Help when when you don't when you when you don't say I wanted uh, I wanted the, the other beer when I, <laughs> I wanted the honey mustard sauce. Uh, no, I, you know it's like uh, no, I don't know. It's, I wouldn't say you annoy me. Uh, uh, Are there disappointing moments of our friendship? There's just it's like uh, it's having this convers this conversation where it's like uh, you get you get so like worried about this like offensive nature that you don't have at all. Uh, you're, you know, and it's like, I don't know how it's not annoying. It's just, it's frustrating to see you go down these, like, like to fall in these like pitfalls that you create for, for yourself, but they're based on nothing. <laughs> you know, like, uh, I don't even know how to explain I, it. Some people have over, just overthink what I say sometimes. Yeah. I overthink what I, what I say. I, I overthink what other people say probably, but that's the thing is like, I, you know, this is the problem is I guess when you look at the world through your own lens, that's when you like, cause me, when I look, when I project my lens onto other people, I go, well, even if they want to be offended by it, they probably will understand that, that they're making it offensive in their own mind. But most people probably don't do that. And when they're offended, they go and do whatever. But what's the worst case scenario if you offend somebody? What if, what if your boss heard that you said that one of your past employees annoyed you? Well, you, it, did you fire that guy? No, he's a, that's he wasn't really, that, he wasn't my employee. He's a, he's a equal. Oh, well, it's, yeah, then there's no conflict there. Like, the only thing that I would worry about if I was you is if you said, like, oh, this guy that, and this is hypothetical for anybody that's listening, uh, this guy that works underneath me that I supervise, he's really annoying or da-da-da, and then you end up having to fire that guy, and that guy hears that and goes, he had bias against me uh, and fired me because he didn't like me. That's where you could get caught. That's where there's, like, a knot that's, that you'd have to worry about. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But just being like, hey, one of my coworkers is annoying because this, this, and this. Um, everybody does that. And you're allowed to do that. We're hum humans. You know? We're allowed to, to dislike or be annoyed by people. Even if it, even if it involves my perspective, my, my feelings, my situations. But I'm talking about somebody else. It's okay. Yeah. You're not hurting. You can't don't do talk about, about it. Don't, don't say the company name. Bleep it out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You can go back and cut. You want to you go back real quick? No, I'll just bleep it. Okay, my bad. I, I didn't even think. I'm so sorry about that. That's okay. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, if you're not hurting, beep, then, uh, then, then, you know. Fair enough. Uh, th that person can be as mad as they want to be. And you might have to deal with the fallout there. That mm -hmm. the guy now knows that you maybe dislike him, but. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
that's just you know, and 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 uh, I'm not saying you're wrong. Uh, it, it just it because I know that you're such a cool, like nice person, and I enjoy your company, and I know that you don't offend people, and nothing you do is malicious, really. Uh, it, I think so. it, like, I've done things with malicious intent. I'm not, I'm not yeah, I'm not that's perfect. why I said that's that's why I said really at the end of it. Yeah. Uh, because that, that, that uh, implies that sometimes I'm sure we all do. We all have, you know, a little bit of that. But uh, but still, it's like um, you you really, like, uh, look out into the future and go, okay, I need to avoid this, 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 and this. And there are things that are they're oasis of, of conflict that don't actually, they look maybe to you like they exist, but they're actually not there. Maybe. In my opinion. And that's just my opinion. Your opinion offends me. And it could. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. Well, fair enough. Uh, that's just yeah. Sorry, maybe I just went into it. Too I still deep don't. Or I still don't want my boss to listen to it. And that's fine. Yeah. Uh, there's certain people I don't tell about, like because I've talked about uh, my. I've talked about family members. I've talked about. I mean, even the fact that there's things that I've told about myself that if I don't want, uh, if I don't want somebody to know about, then I'm definitely not going to tell them to listen to the podcast. Yeah. I don't think I've given away too many like embarrassing stories or maybe, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't um, know. I've definitely opened up some, some, uh, mm -hmm. some boxes uh, yeah. about myself, but I don't, you know, whatever. Your drug stores are usually pretty good though. I like them. Yeah. I well, think they're funny. That's good. Though there is, a, you know, a lot of sadness attached to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know that's uh, I, I don't re you know I don't regret uh, some of my experiences. Yeah, uh, but you're good now. Yeah, the only drug that you have now is an alcoholic beverage with Drew once a week. Yeah, so you could say I'm an en enabler. Possibly, but I think you're you're like one of the only people that I know that had a a problem. But now you can like it's you can manage this. You can you have this under control. Yeah, alcohol. I don't think was ever really a huge issue for you, though. No, no, I never liked alcohol anyway. So, how do you? So now being on these many episodes, how do you feel about beer? Because I know you weren't much of a beer guy initially. Now I know that there's beers that I will drink that I like. Um, I just have to find the right beer. Yeah. Uh, back when I just always like when I thought of beer, you thought of like hams I thought of or the, the smell of a Paps or a hams or or Paps is gross. Like I really had two. Like I had, uh, you know, two or maybe three different opinions of beer, but they all like really registered under that. Smells like a real, like a probably a lager or a uh, what? What would be the quintessential like beer? Um, not a lager. I was wrong about that. An ale, probably. Right? Ale or a pilsner? Yeah. So like that's the smell I associated with, with loggers too with, would be with, with beer. That's the taste or whatever. But then when you get into micro brews that are actually like, uh, you know, like brewed with especially with or love. With, with, yeah, with flavors and with whatever, like, uh, yeah, there's some really good beers that I actually enjoy drinking. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not a big fan of being out of control of my head or out of my, like, you know, where I'm not in control of my senses and my thoughts and stuff. So like, I don't like to get drunk, but I still enjoy drinking a beer now, and like, you know, with, especially here on this podcast. Yeah, there's been something that you've really that you really like, right? Absolutely. Good. Well, I'm glad. Um, trying to keep this one out of the sun. Just getting. Yeah. Should be. Uh, um. What else? I uh, over the weekend, Rob. I did a. A big, big landscaping project and made a built my own fire pit out know, of yeah, out of bricks and pavers, and I used paste and like everything else. When it comes to constructing something, nothing went smoothly. Did you cut yourself? No, I got a blister. Oh, the tip of my it popped already. Did you uh, did you drop a stone on? on I your pinched fingertip? it. Yeah, yeah, I pinched it, and uh, I buy the shit. I paid for 48 of the pavers, 48 bricks, and then I go, I buy this adhesive with, uh, you know, like a caulk gun, and I, I constructed the first layer using the caulk gun, and it's like barely working, brand new, and like didn't work very well, and then it just stopped working altogether, and I was like, what the hell? 
So then, because I'm like halfway through, or I was like predominantly all the way through the first layer, I fucking stabbed the thing open. The the cock? The, it, well, it's uh, like a fireplace. Yeah, yeah, yep. just, yeah but... Um, and then I get a spoon and a knife. And I go, oh, old yeah, you're school. going in old school. Old school. And I'm yeah. fucking swiping that shit on there. And then it's getting all over my hands. And then I get the um, um, the second layer. Finally, I get, the, I get the second layer done. And then I see my neighbor and I go, hey, do you have a, a cock gun I could use? And he gives me a cock gun. And then I, well, I stopped. I stopped to go watch the Packer game. Because I wanted to complete this project before the Packer game, which was at noon. Yep. Didn't happen. And I was annoyed. So I go watch the Packer game. Packers looked solid. The first two quarters really dominating. And then they were they were up 21 to nothing. And then at one point, it was like 16 to 21. I was like, what the fuck happened? Well, we couldn't tackle anybody in the second half. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, How many tackles did we miss in the ton. second? Oh, it was ridiculous. The only, and we got pretty lucky because there was the touchdown. Like, had the had the one guy had the the kicker made the goal field goal, and then if that touchdown didn't come back because of uh like a pass offensive pass interference, I think it was, um, they would Packers would have lost. Yeah. But uh, that's, did you happen to see what happened at the end of the um, Bronco game? The Bears game. Yeah. I watched... Uh, that was an insane ending to a game. Like, maybe the most yeah. dramatic... Because I really wanted the Bears to lose. As did I. It was, it was um, like 30 seconds left. Uh, well, right? Well, it, in the last two minutes, um, the, the, Broncos Bronco, scored. the Broncos were down by seven. And they went for... for the two they, point. They, like, they basically, they got down there. They uh, got the touch... Some, like, they went on fourth down. That's what it was. They got fourth, a touchdown. And fourth and ten. They made that... And then they got the touchdown. Then they were going to go for the two for the win. And uh, they delayed of game. So then they got pushed back five yards. So then they kicked the field goal. Well, they missed the field goal, but a penalty, uh, a holding penalty on the defense gave them the five yards back and gave them a second try. So they went for the two-point conversion. Got it. And then they got it. They're up by and one then, point. Uh, they were up by one point with 30 seconds left. And uh, then the, Bears, and, were uh, yeah, and then the drive. Bears were able to drive it down and kick the field goal. Yeah, I saw that. That was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. And I'm not even a fan of either one of those teams, but I just like I, 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 loved, I decided I wanted the Broncos to win. And, I would have uh, loved the Bears to be in an in 0-2 Position. Yeah, yeah, because they're in our our division or whatever. So, and I'm not a big football guy or whatever, but uh, yeah, I still I want our team to. It was a good it's a good game. Yeah, I'm going to the next Bear game at Lambeau. Bear game? Yeah, Dang. I've never seen them play the Bears. I'm excited. Should be sweet. Heck yeah. Um. Anyways, I watch that, and then I come. I see my neighbor, and I go, "Give me that gun." I support my Second Amendment right to have a cock gun. And uh, it was a joke. Right to bear it, he says. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm going through that, and I, I'm like, I'm almost done, man. This project's almost finally finished. And what happens, Rob? I'm short six fucking blocks. I was going to ask, like, uh, did you do um, the mat? Like, is there, there, I would assume that. 16 on each layer of the big ones and 16 of the um, bricks, too. Did you have to do the math to figure that out, or did was it? Did they give you? Did somebody tell you? I had uh, like a kit or something. I had like all the pieces. Yeah, I guess you could call it a kit. You just had to buy all the individual parts, okay, all the individual yeah, yeah. things, um, and it just told you how much to get. And then, um, so yeah, so then they I got shorted six six of the bricks. I paid for forty eight, but only got forty two. So then I had to go take a shower, go drive back to Menards, get the six bricks. Go to West Bend, have dinner with my dad, and um, uh, he met Carissa. Uh, uh, my dad and Jim met Carissa, and it was it went went well. That's good. Yep. And then, uh, what was the opening line? What did they? What was the first thing? I don't. Know. I think I said something like in a joking way, and then Jim said, "It wouldn't be a day with Drew if he didn't say something stupid." And then Carissa said, that's right. So, so your dad's funnier than you? No. Okay, that was... Yeah. 
Nobody's funnier than me, yeah, Rob. Yeah, that was just a, that was a, a mocking insult, <laughs> a but, little ribbing, little 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 light ribbing. But uh, um, what was I saying? Did Dinner. that, did that, or whatever, and then came back. It was dark outside, and I was like, "No, I'm finishing this fucking project." And I, well, I had to go back to Menards again to get because I forgot to get the he, a, he, a different another tube of adhesive. Because I'd gone through all mine. You had to go get a whole extra tube for six blocks? Yeah, I ran out of adhesive. And then um, and I had to get a new cock gun. Wow. And I did it, and I finished it, and now it's there. Looks good. Thank you. Looks real good. A lot of sweat went into that. A lot of blood. Is that what the red is? Yeah. I'm a real American. Yeah. So, uh, Yeah. What a great story! So you're gonna are you gonna are you gonna buy new lawn furniture? I need. I'm just gonna use the stuff I have. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. Great podcast talk, huh? Right. Yeah. You That's think- how you build a fire pit without any instructions. Uh, just there's a story about building a fire pit for everybody. Yeah. You like that? I enjoyed it, um, but I get to see the fire pit. <laughs> Did you post it on your Instagram? No. I can. If you post it, then if anybody searches your name in Fire Pit, they'll get to see it. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Perhaps. Uh, we made a couple stops on the, the Hot Passport journey, Carissa and I, on Saturday. I have not yet used my Hot Passport without you. And I won't be able to for a while because I'm broke because I'm jobless at the moment. So. Yeah, I'm sorry. It is what it is. But you get the beers on me. Yes. For this, so there. I appreciate that. So I went to Stone Arch in Appleton, which was which is cool. Which I didn't know Stone Arch was in was below the Skyline Comedy Club. Oh, I didn't know that either. Yeah, which is sweet. So if we ever go to a show there, we can go to Stone Arch. It was a cool little place. I liked it a lot. They had good beer. Then we went to a place called McFleshman's, which is like all like based on like. As if you're like in Germany. Okay. It's like German themed. They use the German style, like kind of like beers and. Lederhosen and. Yeah, yeah. Like you have like the, the bubble mugs and steins and shit. Was, they had the like crazy like stained glass stuff. It was pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And um, apparently in I don't know, Britain or whatever, like they don't really do tips. They don't tip there. You don't tip. Oh, yeah. So so they're following that theme where you don't tip. I didn't know that. Of course, I left the tip. A lot, a lot of Catholics there. No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you, you leave. I left the tip, and then if they say, and then I see the sign that says, "If you leave a tip, like they pick a chair, a different charity every month, and all the tips go towards." That's cool. That so this so they pay their white staff a uh, livable wage without tips. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Hmm. Um, yeah. What a what a how what, dare they? What an idea. What a. But uh, so they this this month is the special was Special Olympics, so I gave us money. Nice. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm like pod coin in person. Yeah. I drink beer and and then I take my tip money and give it to charity. Yeah. Give my pod coins. Give my tip money. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I got. My no, birth- yeah, that's uh, um, what was I just gonna say. I was going to say something about something back when you said something. Okay. So let's walk it back. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I um, had something to do with something. I don't remember. <laughs> I really don't. How was, uh, how was your, your, your meetup app? Have you used it? Have you utilized it? Uh, I have not because I haven't been. I haven't, it's all been out of town stuff, and I haven't had the money to go get gas. Sure. Uh, for the gas to get there and stuff. Yeah. But, um, like... Uh, there's like a there's a uh, um, one that I want to go do, which is a uh, it's a movie a cinema a cinematic like critique like you watch movies and then it's a discussion group, but the movie that they have for like this mystery month, science theater, no no they like actually it's, discuss the movies oh yeah they don't they don't talk during the movies it's it all artsy fartsy yeah it was like a 1922 film uh, I like that though I know you do yeah. you do you're sophisticated where I am not. I'm not sophisticated. Sure you are. I try. I I I I I I pose as sophisticated. Because you are. Fake it till you make it, I guess. Yeah, I mean 
I if I'm such a douchebag, Rob, that if I went to one of those, I would mock it all the time, the whole time, and I couldn't control myself not to mock it. Well, then you shouldn't. Don't look at your invites on Facebook. Just ignore that invite. <laughs> Did you invite me? No. <laughs> oh, um, I just even that's like you know and this was this is one of my flaws, Rob. Even with like music, um, if I really hate what I'm hearing, I say it. I say That's this, not a flaw. I say this is horrible. But well, to some people, if they really like the music, they really like the mus- the musician, the band, or the like this this music actually speaks to them, and then they just hear me saying how much it sucks. It it is it's annoying. Well, there's a difference between voicing your opinion and and going like uh like you know if you're, I wa- don't if you're, wa- stop. If you're watching a movie don't and stop. you're like min, 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 well movies like are a little you're, different you're, you're like mocking it you know like I, you that's, mock- that's that's my problem is like I won't just be like this mu- this song is horrible I'll say this is the worst pile of shit I've ever heard in my life like why the fuck is it popular or, or just go on and on and then another song the next song will play and I'll hate it and I'll say something about it I can't control it, Rob, and I need help because yeah, it makes, yeah. makes people mad. And, it, you know, it's not fair. It's not fair to, for Especially me Especially since you listen to punk, and it's like that's the shittiest music there is. So. Huh? Uh, it's weird that your didn't bar you, is Didn't so you high. once tell somebody in a punk band that playing punk music is actually pretty hard and compliment them on their skill? That was back before I had the balls to speak the truth. How dare you? <laughs> no, I, I, I have a lot of respect for punk bands. I listen to more than punk. I listen yeah, you do. I'm not saying that's all you listen to. No. I mean, I know that you love old twangy country. I like some like country sounding music. I don't know. I was just joking. No, oh, but I just, uh, yeah. Um, but no, it's it's bad. And I've known. I know for a fact I've annoyed a certain uh, special someone in my life because <laughs> because I did that. Yeah. Yeah. Me. Probably. No. Uh, I don't think you've ever made fun of my music. No, I think you have a pretty good. Although I don't really listen to music anymore, I listen to podcasts and talk radio and books on tape. Well, see, see, you are bougie and sophisticated. I don't think that's sophisticated. I think that's boring. I think you're artsy fartsy. So just a boring. You're guy. artsy in your fartsy. I agree with one of those. I won't tell you which. <laughs> I just like people people that enjoy ballet and like the beauty of it or whatever. It's just, I think it's so stupid. See, now, ballet, I'm embarrassed for the people on stage, and it makes me very anxious and uncomfortable to watch. Yeah. Just like watching people sing without music backing them up makes me uncomfortable. (laughs) Just acapella? Yeah. I don't like it. Really? It's because I could never do it. You know, I almost feel the embarrassment that, like, when I see somebody doing that, or getting up on stage and really putting themselves out there, even if it's, like, a comedy routine that's no, like, like... Um, even if it's funny and it's like an unknown comic who doesn't have their voice yet, really no. like just coming up when I watch them do their bit and like, I, the idea of putting yourself out there that much, like I, I feel I cringe deep within in, like deep inside of myself really, and, and I have to like walk away or turn it off or whatever. It's, it's like. Um, same thing with any, that's why I can't watch like romantic comedies. Like when somebody professes their love to somebody in a romantic comedy, click, that is gone. Uh, cause it makes me feel so uncomfortable. Okay. So if you had to, you were in a situation where you had to like, you're, you're in a, in a public space, whatever. And this is your one shot. You have to confess your, your love. In a in a, like a big grandiose way, grandiose is that what they say? Yeah, grandiose. A grandiose way. How would you do it? Where would you want to be? Like where? What? What? What cliche romantic situation would you want to be romantic comedy wise? Or if you had to like you just confess your love and propose, or you just say, "Baby, I love you," and and you know all that kind of shit. What would you want to do? Um. Hot air balloon was a ba- was a was an acoustic guitar. Does that happen a lot? The- I I don't know. I'm just like uh, those are it's just pretty- the sappiest things I can think of. But uh, no, I um I you know uh, I I don't know. That's the thing. Like even the I, the thought sporting of- event. What's that? Sporting event. Uh yeah no I wouldn't do that in front of twenty thousand people. 
over the like uh you get on you get on the yeah. jumbotron and you just go baby i love you so much i don't care what my mom says about you i don't i don't care what my friends my family everybody doesn't like you and this is not this is just a joke profess my love to the woman in c c c13 yeah i'm in f87 i don't know i think that'd be kind of funny to do it in a big big grand way like that uh, or during yeah. a concert, like where they pull you up on stage. See, now that's the kind of stuff that's like, um, there's, I've seen, I've heard a couple of things where like somebody, uh, puts a lot of pressure like, on the, the yeah, person yeah, being asked. Like, um, where somebody was like, they got to go up, like somebody on Harmontown went up on stage at Harmontown and then, uh, asked their somebody, they asked him to the prom. It was like low stakes. Sure. But still, uh, there was somebody else that did that where it was like, they ended up in a situation where they were on stage with famous people, and then they took over the microphone, uh, like, and they they took that opportunity to. I mean, if I was, uh, if if the roles were reversed and a woman did that to me, where like a woman went up on stage and was like, uh, Robert Phillips, da da da. I know this would never happen, so I shut got, up. Save, the, save the male listeners. I know shut that I'm. Up. Uh, they don't but, even know what you look like. But I would be like, uh, well, you gorgeous. know what? Uh, uh, looks don't aren't everything. True. But but you got them. But uh, oh God. Um, but uh, <laughs> I would I would uh, I, 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 I wouldn't be able to handle it, dude. If some if 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 if, if they put me in that position, I I I, I would break down. I'm breaking down right now. What if what if what if you wanted to say yes? I would piss myself and run away. <laughs> if I didn't faint first. Really? I, probably. I I I I, I, I get it so <laughs> I, I'm sweating right now just talking about it. It's funny. Yeah, I, I, it's I like I, I like yeah. even even hypothetical situations that I mean, really, don't happen to that many people. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it makes it's a, you so nervous. The idea of that is so crazy to me. Like, at yeah. least on a, like on a podcast, I can talk, and I'm I'm a faceless, whatever, you know. And it's yeah. like, uh, but but when I'm in a room full of people, like I do not want to get married in a big wedding because that sounds like even though I'm not even the person that's being looked at the 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 bride, it's the bride's day. And, and, I think both of, I think both individuals are. But still, even that, okay, that makes it even more nerve wracking. But even just standing next to the person who, uh, who, like, I didn't even like being in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, the, the party, the wedding party for my brother, like, because I had to stand at the front of the room. Nobody's looking anywhere near me, but, yeah. but it just like, what do you do with your hands? What do you do with your eyebrows? Your eyebrows? You get them waxed. <laughs> yeah, that works. Uh, would you, uh, what if, what if it was a, a a small restaurant, romantic dinner? You know, you're drinking champagne. I could or probably do that. Uh, yeah, there's a weird like that's where there's this crazy weird balance. Like, uh, and I don't know so much now, but like back when I was in college, um, there was like uh, in my sociology class, we had to do this thing where we were in groups of six. I might have talked about this before, but like. Uh, and we had to pick somebody to be the person that was going to go and talk to people, and the rest were going to be observers. And I was like, "Oh, I'll I'll be that person." And we, what I ended up having to do was getting try. I had to try and get people to tie my shoe for me, even though I had nothing in my hands. And it was like to see how many people would tie your shoe for you just yeah. because you asked. Sure. A lot of people do, uh, but it's like uh, now I think on that, and I go, "Well, you know, it's like that's an embarrassing like to go up to people with." Like in the cafeteria, there's plenty of people around and ask a random stranger to tie your shoes for you. Uh, or in the halls, like I was able to do that just fine, even though there are plenty of people around. It's an embarrassing thing to do. And it's like you're putting yourself in the uh, position of like making a spectacle of some sort. Uh, and I had no problem with that, but there's no emotion based in that, I guess. Mm. Maybe it's the idea of like emoting in front of people that I have a problem with. Um, Maybe. Maybe do you have a fear of being potentially publicly rejected? Phil, Phil, Phil. Honestly, I think uh, I, I think I have more of a fear of. Phil, he'll be, he'll be fine. You let him in. No, he sounds like he's having a fucking stroke. He's just barking at this dude. Yeah. Phil, Phil, come 
on, Phil. Phil. Come on. Stop it. Oh, man. He's just been... He's not even hooked up to anything. What do you mean? He pulled the thing out. He's just... On the ground? Yeah. Did he really? He's just been free ranging out there. Oh, man. Maybe, like, the illusion of the, the, <laughs> of the leash. All right. Phil. Phil. Come on. Oh, here he goes. He's got freaking speed speedies. But yeah, so, uh, like, I think it's less about being rejected publicly and more about being accepted but having everybody else go, oh, well, she just felt sorry for him. Yeah. Because he did it publicly. Therefore, she's going to walk out of here and break up with that guy. Mm. How many that, times do you think that's happened? I, I don't know. I, and that's, I've never wonder, heard. I've never even heard of that happening. But somehow in my I brain, bet you it that's, has. that's where you know, my brain goes. You know? I, don't, I don't know if I've ever said this to you, but one time I was talking to Carissa just about like situations and stuff like that. I'm like, everything you could possibly think of has happened. Has happened. Did yeah. I say that to you before? No, no. But I've definitely had that thought. Yeah. Oh. Like everything, so that so this situation of a person proposing in front of a big group, she says yes or he says yes, and then two hours later they break up. Yeah, that, yeah. that has happened. Oh yeah, yeah. What other weird things can you think of that has probably that has happened? Oh man, I used to. I used little to, like sneeze uh, and toot, little sneeze and fart, a yeah. chew, and they 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 poo poo. I think. Uh, How dare Phil just leave me like this? Phil, I thought we were friends. I feel like um, things that, like, uh, God, you know, I used to, it's hard to come up with them on the spot, but, like, there's so many times where when you're talking about something and you go, oh, this has probably yeah. happened before, <clears throat> you know, like. Can you open that door so he can go get water? What's that? I think he looks thirsty. Like, oh, okay. So I, didn't, I didn't know if you wanted to let him roam around in there. No, that's fine. Well, now he's back. That just gave him the uh, the the ambition to run again. Yes, you gotta tell you, being a dog owner is uh, Jesus Christ. Is if you if you people could see what's happening right now, <laughs> <laughs> like, this fucking dog. Oh, you just, oh you know, did you hurt yourself, <laughs> buddy? You were an idiot, Phil. <laughs> yeah, he just he just full blown sprinted <laughs> and jumped into the back of the couch and, and hurt himself. Yeah. Not cool. Don't do that, man. He's stupid. Rob, why are you panting like that? Let me just... Uh, z- <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, there's... there's, there's uh, go by your owner. Go by your master. Phil! There he goes. Um... There's so many like little little crazy things that are like you know uh, that seem like they they'd be ridiculous, but yeah, somebody's done it. You know, somebody uh, has has somebody's probably fallen uh, fallen down some stairs and resulting in in getting healed somehow, or 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 or, or smarter. Yeah, you know, like hit their head and and uh, now they're reverse, smart. Yeah, reverse that, some. that happened. So uh, I, I, when I was at the radio station. The news guy interviewed this dude, and I don't really know, like, apparently he just got, like, the shit beat out of him one day. Just beat up as a kid. And then, and then like, the next day or whatever, just incredibly intelligent, knew everything. Knew everything. It's yeah, weird. Like, that knew, is like, yeah. knew, like, coordinates. Well, well and that's, like, this, that's where there's this idea of, like, okay. All like, this information what, what is you, ingrained. Do you, do you learn or But do we you don't know? activate it. Until, but I think the big thing is it's, like. So we get the shit beat out of us. It's, like, the people that have that, that uh, quote, unquote, disease where they remember every second of their life. It's every a disease? Second. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's a syndrome or whatever. So, like, you can go, what were you doing at 6.04 uh, you know, 20, 20 years ago, six months and three days, you know, it's 22, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, and they can tell you, they remember all of that. They remember what they were, if they were reading, like they have a, they, they remember. Couldn't they just make that up though? Well, it's been tested. Let's, 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 let's test it. Ask me, ask me a question. Ask me, give me a hypothetical here. Let's, well, let's well, see what well, if I Yeah. Can. Well, what were you doing uh, in, in 1997, January 22nd at 6 p.m.? Oh, 1997, January 22nd. I was six years old, 6 p.m. I was 
I walked into the kitchen on on uh, uh, when I was living on Sally Avenue. My mother was making me macaroni and cheese. Bullshit! Craft. I know for a fact that it was not uh, mac and cheese. Why? It was ramen. Mac and cheese with hot dogs. Yeah. I don't know. I'm Ramen and hot dogs? But, but, no, it's been tested, though. It's like, gross. there's, the, 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 like, uh, they're, they've tested it on, uh, there's only like six or eight individuals that have this syndrome. But the fact of the matter is, is that uh, if, if you can unlock that in your brain, because your brain takes in all this information, but most of it just gets thrown away or forgotten. So somehow, somehow everyone has the capability of doing this. It's a matter of how do we do it. I don't know if that's true, but it seems like it should be the case, doesn't it? Well, in this case where this guy got the the snot kicked out of him, is it, and and he just knew like coordinates and and crazy things. Is it like, was that information presented to him already and somehow was stored in his brain where he couldn't access it, but now he got the shit kicked out of him and he can't access it? Or are we born with all knowing powers and ability? We just don't know how to access it. I don't know. If you talk about like quantum mechanics, uh, oh god, here we go. <laughs> the probability <laughs> would state that uh, you know, uh, uh, well, I mean, I don't know if it works with like coordinates and stuff like that. But if you're talking about even like psychics and shit like that, like uh, yeah, how many times do psychic like there have been times where psychics have been right to the letter? I mean, okay, uh, somebody wrote a book. Back in the 1500s or something like that, about a shipwreck, uh, about, about a cabin boy who uh, worked his way up to captain of a ship, and the ship wrecked at this island, and something da da da. It was a book, but uh, like 150 years later, to the letter, like the guy's name, the cabin boy's name was the same, the name of the ship was the same, the island they crashed it was the Go. same. It all happened 150 years later, the way this guy wrote it. Yeah. Now, did it happen because he wrote it, or did he write it because it happened, or was it coincidence that uh, he wrote a story that because time is is uh, you know unlimited and inf- infinite, that eventually every every fictional story that's not fantastical and magical, like that is based in reality, will happen at some point. Yeah, infinite a lot uh, is a pretty big number, you know. Mm-hmm. Crazy. It's pretty big. I mean, it's not that big, but it's pretty big. Yeah. You're still studying the quantum mechanics. Um, Rob, I think I think it's time. Is it that time? I think it's time to talk about the beer we drank, which was Golden Road Brewing Mango Cart, a mango wheat ale. Fucking delicious. I drank it. I drank it a long time ago. Then I'll, I'll drink it again. Oh, I'm going to buy it again, Rob. Yeah. And just casually drink it now that I've learned to love it. Yeah, especially if you, if you like fruit beers, get this beer. If you're just like beer, get this beer. You should if you be able, hate mangoes, maybe don't get it. You should be able to get it because it's from Los Angeles. It seems like they 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 brew it or they they distribute it on a larger scale. Uh, Anheuser Busch owns this, so yeah. Mm. I gotta say, uh, there's he, not not too many mango. What's he got? A clothespin. Oh, drop it. There's not too many mango beers that are, are bad. I think most of the mango beers that we've drank have been pretty good. Yeah, this one, delicious. I loved it a lot. Very good. It's very good. So uh, we say drink it. Part of your balanced breakfast. Uh, make sure you're following us on Twitter, at Dudes on a Porch. Like us on, uh, follow us on Instagram, Dudes with Brews Pod. You can get all the pictures and, and shit like that. You can see pictures of Phil, who's a, a big dumb dumb. And then um, email us. You can email us. Oh, we got it. We got a, a new email not that long ago from a guy who found us on Podcoin. Um, you you want me to read it for you real quick, Rob? Yeah, yeah. It's a nice one. It's uh, so this individual found us on Podcoin when uh, you can you can get us on there too and all that cool stuff. Uh, yeah, if you're listening to us on Podcoin right now, you should be getting one point five or two Podcoins instead of one for every ten minutes. Yeah. Because we're on the bonus. Yeah. So that's all the more rice that you can donate to the homeless. Yeah. To the so foodless. Is it foodless? Yes, foodless. Homeless people get uh, blankets. I don't know. You have to look into it. Uh, yeah, it's, I forget. Guy in, uh, in Minnesota, his name is Jordan. He wanted to let us know that we're doing an amazing job with the podcast and to keep it up because he downloaded Podcoin a couple of days ago for the first time and he opened the app uh, to the, the present day where he emailed us. He's only listened to dudes with brews on a porch. Nice. Very nice of you. And I, I like that. Um, 
he says for he, he thanks us for being so awesome and providing them providing him with daily laughs and more. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for the shout out, Jordan. Yeah, I thanks, Jordan. It. Really appreciate it. Always and uh, I emailed him and said, you know, thanks, and we appreciate it. We're, we're happy that he likes what he hears, and and Minnesota's great. Yeah, I do. You know, sans Vikings, Minnesota's good. But that's just because I, you know. Yeah, we're you know we got to have that rivalry. Unfortunately, that's okay. Yeah, but we won't be rivals with you at, at the breweries. Yeah. So we can set that aside. If you want to say nice words to us and hear your email read, email us at dudes, uh, dudes on ports at gmail.com. If you want to give us negative uh, reviews for us to read and then for us to uh, slowly plot your death. Um, I mean, that's rough. I mean, uh, if you tell us so what you, if you, if you, if you, if you, uh, I don't know. Never mind. I lost it. All right. That's a good way to end it. <laughs> Pew, pew, audio. Goodbye, everyone.